Hey guys, this is part 4 of the serialization in C-Sharp video series and it is about custom serialization by implementing the iFormatter interface. There are some very good and useful serialization providers available in the .NET framework like Binary, XML and JSON. All three of them have been covered in the first three parts of this video series with code examples. You can begin from part 1 if you want to learn serialization in .NET as a general concept. Otherwise, if you are just interested in custom serialization, then it's perfectly fine to just watch this video. Custom serialization in c -sharp lets us define our own serialization and deserialization logic of a type. In this video, I will show you how to implement the iFormatter interface and write custom logic for serialization and deserialization. We will be using and extending the previous code from the first three videos and first I will create a custom serializer class which will implement the iFormatter interface and then we will serialize and deserialize the person object using our new custom serializer. The first thing that we need to do is to include the namespaces which we are going to need. So the first one which we will need is system.runtime.serialization and we will be using reflection to fetch the property names and values from the object so we can use system.reflection let's create the custom serializer class and this class will implement the iFormatter interface so that we will be able to use the serialize and deserialize methods so class custom serializer and then iFormatter now we will need to implement a bunch of properties and methods so the first thing that I will do is to provide a basic implementation of the properties which we need to have in this class which are these ones. We are not actually going to use any of these. We are only concerned with the serialize and deserialize methods. So I'm just going to provide their empty implementation. So the first argument is the stream which we are going to use to write the serialized stream. The second one is the object which we are going to serialize. So first let's just throw a new not implemented exception we will remove it in a moment but first let's just use this code to remove any errors the second one is going to be the deserialize methods implementation so public object deserialize this is going to return the object which has been deserialized and it is again going to accept the stream from which we are going to read the serialized contents and let's just remove this error we are going to use this custom serializer to save the object's state in a text file and in the first line we are going to write the type name of the object and in the subsequent line we are going to provide the key value pairs for the properties and their subsequent values. So for example if the property name is this and property values this then this is how we are going to save them. And in the first line we are going to provide the type name although we will not be using the type name for any purpose we just need to save it so that we will know which type the object belongs to because we will be sending in the type as an argument in this custom serializers constructor. So create a private type and then underscore type which we are going to use and then we will need a constructor so public and then custom serializer and a type argument so underscore type equals to type now let's just implement this serialize method and i'm going to remove this line of code the first thing that we need to do is to get the list of properties and when we have done that then we will first write the type name and then we will write the property names and values so to fetch the list of the properties we can create a new list and let's just have the type of list as property info i'm going to name it as properties equals to new underscore type dot get properties this is going to be an array so i'm going to convert it to a list next we need to create a stream writer to write to the text file so a stream writer equals to new stream writer and we are going to send in the serialization stream as an argument now let's just use this stream writer to first write the um, the type name in the first line so stream writer dot write line and then we can write the 
underscore type dot name and now we need to iterate over all of the properties to write the property and its values key value pairs so for each and then property info let's just call it um, you know what property info and then in properties now what we can do is we can use a stream writer dot write line and let's use a string dot format so the first token is going to be for the property name and then the second one is going to be the for the property value so property info dot name and then we need to get the property value and we can do that by calling the um, the property info dot get value and in this get value we need to provide the object from which we need to fetch the value and that is the the graph which has been provided as an argument into this serialize method this one so when we have done that then finally what we can do is we can um, flush the stream writer to save the changes so stream writer dot flush and that's pretty much it for this method this is enough to serialize the object which we are sending in as an argument and um, using the type which has been provided while this custom serializer object is being initialized next we are going to implement the deserialize method and it is going to be reverse of what we did in the serialize first we will create a new object of this type which has been provided into the constructor and then we will um, read the file contents from this serialization stream and then we will um, you know fetch the property name and values from those types and then we will have to set the property values individually by using the names which we have read from the file so let's just first remove this exception first we need to create the object which we need to return so object obj equals to activator dot create instance and we can provide the type as an argument so underscore type and then let's just return the object first and get back to rest of the stuff so let's just first create the stream reader so using where sr equals to new stream reader and we can provide this serialization stream as an argument and this using block when exited will automatically um, return any resources which we are not using to the application so first let's just list down the steps which we are going to follow and the first one is to read the type name although we are not going to use it but let's just read it because we have written it into the stream so um, read the type name and then we need to read the rest of the contents so when we will do that then we will have to fetch the key value pairs as property names and property values and then we will write those property names and values into this object which we have created for this type so to read the type name i'm just going to create a string field and let's just call it type name equals to sr dot read line now to read the rest of the contents we can create another field this can be done by sr dot read to end because we need to read everything now so first we will have all of the individual lines as key value pairs in individual strings for that we can create a list of a string type and let's just call it pairs and we can split the the contents which we have read using the new line characters and that can be done by providing a string array so a string and then we need to provide the characters by which we need to split the lines so let's just do that and then we need to provide the string split options and we are going to use the remove empty entries because we don't want to have empty entries although it is not really possible to have empty entries based on the code which we have written for the serialized method but still for good measure let's just provide this argument and then this is going to be an array so we need to convert it into a list so we have our pairs and now we can fetch the 
property name and property values so first let's create the fields for the key and value which we are going to use in each iteration and now for each string pair in pairs first let's create an array which will have the key and the value so a string key value equals to pair dot split we are using colon as a separator so let's just provide it and then we can fetch the key as the first item so key equals to key value and the first index and the value can be the second one and now we need to create a new property info type so property info property info equals to underscore type we can fetch the property by using the key value which is the property name so type dot get property and then we need to provide the key as an argument and if this property info is found it is not null then what we can do is if property info is not null then we can set its value within the object so property info dot set value and then we need to provide the object first so the object is this one obj and the value is going to be this one the value and then this is not an array so we can provide null for the index and that's pretty much it for this deserialize method and now we need to modify this data serializer class to add the methods to use our custom serializer class for that purpose i'm just going to copy and paste this xml serialize and deserialize methods because the implementation is going to be more or less same so let's just first rename the method and we need to create the custom serializer class and let's just call it custom serializer and we need to provide the type name so first a file exists then delete it and then create a new one but we will not be using this text writer or a stream writer we are going to use the file stream so file stream um, file stream equals to and then file dot create and then provide the file path which is this one delete this line and then let's provide the file stream as an argument in this serialize method and then we can close this file stream after the serialization has been done for the deserialize method let's just first rename it and we need to create the custom serializer object so custom serializer provide the data type as an argument over here and now again we need to create the file stream which we need to send as an argument so let's just do that file stream and then let's just close it and then finally we will return the object we need to call custom serialize over here while also providing the argument which it needs and it needs the type of the object which we need to serialize along with the object itself and the file path and then we can call the custom deserialize by providing the type and the file path and then finally converting it or typecasting it into the person type and then finally the code which is already there will work now let's just run this and see if it is working or not so the console is empty and that means that we have made a mistake so the problem over here is that when we are deserializing then we are again creating a new file instead of doing that we had to open the file that was a copy paste mistake so file dot open read and then provide the file path this will simply open the file for reading and now let's test again so now we can see the values of first name and last name as john and doe now let's open the file in which we have saved the serialized stream so this is the debug folder and these are the contents in the first line we have the type name which is person and then in the subsequent lines we have the key value pairs for the property name and its value and that is how we can create our own very simple custom serialization and deserialization logic although it really depends on your requirements but this is how you can get started with this stuff this is all that this video has to offer to you guys and do let me know what you think about it by using the comments area if you have any questions then feel free to ask them also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to stay updated with the latest videos. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos. I will see you in the next one. Till then, have a great day.